So let's move on to our next strategy here, which is going to be about setting healthy boundaries. And the key to this strategy is recognizing the impact that a substance use disorder can have on the family system. And to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here, I got this presentation I call the eight second lecture on chemical dependency. It goes something like this. Here's the substance user. Here's the substance. The eight second lecture on chemical dependency is this person's life begins to revolve around the use of the substance. It's that simple. My experience is that usually by the time I'm done drawing this circle, family members are starting to nod and they're saying, yep, that's it. And then I'll say, since we saved so much time on that, we can move ahead to the eight second lecture on codependency, which goes something like this. And unfortunately, this person has other people in his life. And the eight second lecture on codependency is these people's lives begin to revolve around this person's life, which is revolving around the use of the chemical. What kind of day these people have depends on what kind of day this guy is having, which depends on his relationship with the mood altering substance at the time. They are in a sense codependent. And that's codependency at its most basic definition. You can't argue with that. And again, it's my experience that when I draw that second circle, family members are really starting to nod. They really get that one. You may be having that experience right now as you're seeing this for the first time. But we also need to go a little further and take a look at what's going on emotionally here. Anytime there's an addiction in a family system, there's going to be a lot of unresolved feelings that can easily end up getting displaced. The people around the substance use are going to be angry, they're hurt, they're scared. Some of them might be feeling guilty or ashamed. And the bottom line is this whole family system becomes just a mess of unresolved feelings. And that's what we got when a family enters into treatment. And so the value of this eight second lecture on codependency is that while it might not be pleasant to see it right there in black and white as to what's going on in the family, it at least offers an explanation as to how we got there. And with that explanation comes a solution. And you can see by this illustration that the first thing for family members to do is to step back and remove yourself from this dynamic of being controlled by unhealthy behavior. A lot of you have already taken the first step in this process by addressing the problem and helping your loved one get into treatment. That's a good beginning, but it's not taking your control back completely. This is going to continue to get tested as you deal with different situations over the course of treatment. Ultimately, you're going to see that it's a process of you learning how to identify, set, and maintain healthy boundaries. Now, it's important to clarify exactly what we mean by the word control in a discussion like this, because it's going to be different depending on the age and your relationship with the client. The first thing we're going to point out is that there's a difference between being in control and being controlling. And this one we can keep real simple. In control, good. Controlling, not good. But if we take it a little further, we can start to see where the differences between adult and adolescent relationships come into play here. And that has to do with the parameters of what should or shouldn't be controlled in any given relationship. So let's start off with adolescents. The bottom line is parents are responsible for the welfare of a minor child. They need to be in control. In the case of a substance use disorder, if you're aware that your child has a medical condition that could lead to disability or premature death, that's straight out of the medical definition of addiction. It's your responsibility to make sure that they get the proper care for that. It doesn't make any difference whether they want it or not. It's your decision. You're responsible for them. And if they resist, that just means that you develop a plan that takes their resistance into account and you respond accordingly. Now, this obviously isn't going to work the same way with adults, right? Controlling your child is being responsible. Controlling your spouse is being, well, controlling. And remember what we said earlier about being controlling. So when we talk about control in adult relationships, it's going to be more about boundaries, knowing what's within your control, what's not within your control, and not allowing yourself to be controlled. So if it's a spouse who's suffering from a substance use disorder, you're not responsible for their welfare, and you can't force them to go to treatment or to get sober. That's not within your control. 
What is within your control, though, is what you accept for your relationship and recognizing how you deserve to be treated. That's called self-care. And if we go back to our circle here, and it's the husband who's alcoholic, that means that there's going to be times when he chooses alcohol over his relationship with his wife. And so by definition, being in a relationship with an active addict or alcoholic is automatically going to be a setup for unmet needs. And the wife has a decision to make about what's acceptable to her with regard to how she deserves to be treated. Again, that's called self-care. But then we got to add that if there's children involved, there's going to be unmet needs there too. And so if the children are being damaged by living with an active alcoholic, she's responsible for their welfare, and that could end up factoring into her decision about what's acceptable or not. But hiring a transport service to carry your spouse off to treatment isn't going to be an option, right? So the proposition of treatment becomes a boundary that you set. I don't deserve to live like this, and this relationship cannot be healthy as long as your substance use disorder goes untreated. And then you have decisions to make about what you're going to do going forward. The important thing to remember here is what's best for your emotional health and what's within your control. And this is not to suggest by any means that the answer to that is easy. In a lot of cases, it can be beneficial for family members to get some support or counseling to help them figure out what an appropriate boundary or expectation might be. Now, some of you might be listening to this saying, okay, you've talked about dealing with children and you've talked about dealing with adults, but I'm the parent of an adult child. What the heck am I supposed to do? And the short answer here is that these cases are going to fall somewhere in between. And it's going to have a lot to do with the age of the child and their level of independence. In the case of a 19-year-old who still lives at home and is totally dependent on his parents, there's a lot of leverage there for when it comes to setting boundaries. We can't make you get into recovery, but we sure can show you how strongly we feel about you getting the help that you need. And that means that we can't continue to support you if you aren't willing to address your problem. So what you're doing there is you're offering them a choice, which is something that's within your control. What you don't have control over is what they do with that choice. So when it comes to how much control you have, it's really more a matter of identifying what kind of leverage there is for encouraging the substance user to accept the help that's being offered. Parents of the 19-year-old who's still totally dependent on them are probably going to have a lot more influence on him than the parents of a 30-year-old who's married and has a family. But the important thing to remember here is that every case is different and that leverage doesn't just mean physical or financial support. Sometimes it's a matter of setting emotional boundaries. Again, this is something where there's no simple answer and getting support to help you figure this all out can be a really good idea. The good news here is that there's this paradox when it comes to intervention and control. And that's that, to the extent that you ultimately have no control over whether your loved one chooses to recover or not, you following through with what you do have control over ends up being the most influential thing you can do in helping your loved one move towards recovery. And that goes for clients of any age. The parameters of what we can control and what we can't control may differ, but the underlying principles of setting healthy boundaries and not allowing yourself to be controlled by unhealthy behavior are going to be the same, regardless of whether your loved one's an adolescent or an adult.